Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the absolute best of the best makeup that I've tried so far in 2024. These are products that are not just likes, they're loves, like things that if I were rating them online, I would give all of these five stars because they're just that good. There have been a ton of products that I've liked this year, but I really just wanted to cut this down to the absolute best of the best and the things that I think are the most worth buying. I like to do these videos quarterly that way. I don't completely overwhelm you with products at the end of the year. And I also have a worst makeup of 2024 video that I posted, I think it was like two weeks ago. So that's already up on my channel in case you missed it. But um, yeah, with all that being said, why don't we just go right ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so starting out, I guess, with complexion products, that's usually where I start. I wanna talk about a couple of primers that I've tried so far this year. And for the purposes of this video, I'm actually putting primer and SPF in the same category. So this is both. The first one that I just can't wait to share with you guys, and I've talked about this a lot already, is the Beauty of Joseon SPF. So this is just an SPF, it's not a primer, but oh my gosh, I was completely blown away when I tried this the first time, how light and silky it is. It just has the best formula. It basically feels like a really lightweight moisturizer. It sinks right into your skin. There's no greasy feel. There's no sunscreen smell. You really would not even know that you were putting on sunscreen it is so so comfortable to wear this has definitely been my number one sunscreen but I've been testing out some more Korean formulas so I'm gonna have to do maybe a video on those at some point and let you know if I find anything that I like better than this but so far this is at the absolute top of my list I've also really been enjoying the NYX blur screen I tried this in a video maybe a couple weeks ago now and I was so excited to try it because this is an SPF 30. It's not quite as high as the Beauty of Joseon, which has SPF 50. So I do prefer this for that reason, but if I'm not gonna be out for very long, this is fine. What I love about this is that it's a blurring primer and SPF in one. So especially heading into the summertime, I don't wanna be putting a ton of layers on my face. It's just gonna feel too heavy and greasy in the more humid air. So I like that this is just a one-step product. It's my SPF, but it also gives Gives me that blurred effect and it really does I was super happy when I tried this out in the video you guys might remember just my makeup laid so nicely on top of this and it was really a huge difference from the Kosas dream beam which I think is kind of a similar product but my makeup pilled on top of this no matter what I did this one is just everything I've tried it with just applies so smoothly so I think if you're looking for a sunscreen that's gonna blur check this out I've had really good results with it and another blurring primer, this isn't an SPF, but just I feel like it's one of the best blurring formulas I've tried in a really long time, is the Wet n Wild Impossible Stick Primer. So I have tried the original Wet n Wild Impossible Primer in the tube. For some reason, I didn't feel like that did very much for me. So I wasn't expecting too much going into this, but you might remember in the video where I tried this, how shocked I was at the end of the day when I did my check-in, how much smoother the side with the primer looked than the side without, because I only did one side of my face for that video. I mean, there was a huge noticeable difference. So I think as far as blurring primers go, you guys know I lost my L'Oreal Studio Secrets primer. They discontinued it. This one, I feel like is kind of a good replacement. At least it has been so far. It's not exactly the same but it does have really good blurring properties so I think this is another great one to check out as far as foundations go there are really two that are at the absolute top of my list one is high-end one is drugstore so the high-end one and guys I'm sorry if you hear my landscapers outside I swear they come every single time I sit down to film the video um, but anyway my favorite high-end one is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow. I loved their original HD Skin, it was incredible, but this one for dry skin is even better. It just looks so good. It really feels like a moisturizer going on. I'm wearing it today and it's just completely flawless. It sinks right in, it doesn't leave it feeling greasy, and it just really looks nice and smooth. It doesn't settle into the fine lines and it also doesn't grab at any dry patches that might be on my face. So this is one of the nicest hydrating foundations ever. I feel like it has such a good skin-like finish and it's like about medium coverage, maybe light to medium. So it really just checks all the boxes for me. And then when it comes to drugstore foundation, you guys probably know what I'm gonna say. It's the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfecting Essence. 
This is such a polarizing product and I remember back when I first tried it, there weren't a lot of other reviews out on YouTube yet. And when I put this on, I think what struck me about it the most is that it is so thin and lightweight like an essence and I was expecting it to have no coverage and it actually has way better coverage than I thought it was going to. It just evens everything out so nicely. And because it's so light, I just felt like it went straight into my skin. It doesn't sit on top like a lot of foundations do. And so it just looks incredibly smooth and natural on my skin. And I'm 46 years old, by the way, so I have some fine lines, I have texture, like I don't have perfect skin. And I feel like this doesn't exaggerate any of the things I don't want it to exaggerate. And it also gives some hydration, so it plumps things up a little bit. And like I said, it just looks really smooth. And maybe you guys have seen this too, but there are so many negative reviews out there on this. Like so many YouTube videos that I've seen, people just don't like this. And when it comes to foundation, I often feel like I'm the odd one out because like, for example, everybody loves the L'Oreal um, skin tint like in with the dropper. Everyone goes crazy for that on YouTube. I hated it because it's so full of alcohol. It made my skin look like the Crypt Keeper. It made everything just completely dry out, sucked all the moisture right out. So I absolutely hated that one, but yet I love this. And it just seems like whatever I like, it's always the opposite. I don't know. I know everybody's skin and preferences are different and I don't love that this is super expensive. I mean, it really is. But at the drugstore, there's always the possibility that, you know, CoverGirl goes on sale or they have coupons and that kind of thing. So I feel like you probably don't have to pay full price for this. All right, so let's move on to cheek products. There are three here that I really wanted to talk about. One of them I haven't even mentioned on my channel before. So you are actually gonna see some things in this video that I haven't mentioned. So the first product you have seen me talk about and it's the LYS Blush Sticks. These are so good. I really enjoy their cream blushes that come in like those little triangle compacts, but I think I like these even more. They're so pigmented, but yet when you go to blend them out on your skin, they blend super easily. So I feel like the silky texture that they have keeps them from giving you clown cheeks. I like that they dry right down to a powder. They don't mess with your foundation underneath and the colors that they come in are so beautiful. I love a stick formula. I think even more than the ones that come in a compact. I just find them to be really quick and easy. And most days I am doing my makeup as quickly as I can just to get out the door. So these were a big hit for me also. I mean, honestly, all the things I'm gonna talk about are stick blushes. Uh, the next one is the Florence by Mills Cheeky Pop blushes. Now, I don't think these are new for 2024. They might've come out 2023, I think, but I first tried them this year and I've talked about them in a lot of videos. So I don't wanna completely bore you guys who have seen it over and over again. They have a super nice texture that dries right again to that powdery finish. So they're not all sticky and like moving around your foundation. And because they have enough pigmentation right away, they're not a formula that has to be built up. And I think when you have to start adding tons of layers of cream blushes, that's when it starts to look patchy or weird. So I love that these have enough pigmentation where you don't have to do that. And these also are one of the longest lasting blushes I've ever used. I put it on in the morning and at night when I go to bed, it's still there. And I know I'm not alone with these because the reviews on the Ulta website are almost five stars and people are just loving these, but yet no one talks about them. It's super weird. And then the third blush I wanted to mention is one that I haven't talked about on my channel, but I've been trying these for a little while and they are so nice. These are the Kaja Dewy Bar. So these are again, a stick blush, but these actually you can use on your lips too. So unlike the Florence by Mills one, these have a little bit more of a dewy feel. They're kind of similar to the LYS ones. I don't think that they're dewy enough to feel sticky on your cheeks. I'm wearing one of them actually today. What color do I have? I'm wearing Berry Sparkler actually, but they come in gorgeous colors. I love all of them. And I think because they have that little bit of dewiness, you can put them on your lips and they don't look or feel dry. So they go on like a super light weightless lip balm that you really can't even feel, but they just stain your lips with a little bit of color. And I think these are gonna be such an awesome thing just heading into the summer. Again, one of those quick and easy things that I'm gonna pack in my suitcase and use them both on lips and cheeks to get my makeup done really fast when we're away. They also smell fruity and they're just a really fun product. So. 
I am loving these. I think they're amazing. And also when it comes to bronzer, there's a couple that I really wanted to mention. First up is the Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzer. I've always liked the Cloud Paint blushes, so I had a feeling I was going to like this, but I think when I tried it for the first time on video, I really was not only impressed with the formula, which feels basically like the blushes, but also the color. This color sale I thought was just absolutely perfect for me. It has a little bit of a cool undertone, slightly rosy, but also it warms up my skin. It's not cool like a contour. I just find that unlike a lot of bronzers, it's not orange or yellow. I mean, I guess the best way I could describe it is it's just a perfect neutral. It's not really too cool or too warm. It's somewhere right in the middle. I love it and it has the most silky and seamless blend. Once you put it on, you can't tell like where the product stops and your skin starts. It really just looks incredibly natural. And speaking of natural, the NYX Buttermilk Bronzers are also a huge favorite right now. When I first saw these online, they all looked like they were gonna be rosy toned and and I was a bit disappointed when I got two colors home and they're more bronze than rosy. They, again, they're kind of neutral. They're not super cool. They're not really warm, but my disappointment over them not being rosy faded very fast because as soon as I tried these, I quickly realized they're again, like one of the most blendable powder bronzers ever. You guys know I like the L'Oreal Infallible one. That is super blendable. The Milani Silky Matte, that one also very easy to work with. It doesn't get muddy or patchy but these are just on a whole nother level. I can't even describe to you how easily they blend on your skin. For a powder, they almost just melt like they're a cream formula and they look undetectable on the skin. They're that seamless. The only downside to them is that they have a coconut scent really similar to the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. So if you don't like that, Unfortunately, you're probably not gonna like these either, but I have to give it to NYX. This formula is impressive. And then another one, I really just tried this very recently. It's the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzing and Sculpting Stick. So I have mine in the shade Chocolate Mousse, which I think is the lightest color. And I just tried this super recently in a video and I really, again, loved how silky it is, kind of similar to the Glossier. It's kind of like this, but in stick form. It has that melting quality where you barely even have to blend it. You touch a brush to it and it already kind of just starts fusing with your skin. And they're just incredibly easy to work with. If you're a beginner and you're not quite sure about bronzer and contour, I just think this is pretty foolproof. and. Also, it smells exactly like a Tootsie Roll, so I like that too. Moving on to some eyeshadow palettes. I also have some that I didn't talk about yet and others that I did talk about. So first up is the Doll Squad 3. You all know how much I love the other Doll Squad palettes and they came out with one that is largely cool toned. It does still have some warm shades in here, but the other two were, I think, warmer than this one. And in here you have some really gorgeous cool tone shades along the bottom. And then you also have this kind of rose taupey shade that I use probably the most often and this beautiful taupey shade for the crease as well and if you haven't tried this formula yet you are missing out like I'm telling you this is one of the absolute best it's talc free and if you miss those full pigment shimmer shades that are not toppers that don't have a ton of glitter they just have a gorgeous metallic sheen that is what you're getting in this palette they're like those old school just like the ones that everybody used to say were buttery and creamy they're amazing. And even though I go on about the shimmers, the mattes are fantastic too. They are just the silkiest, most easy to blend. So this is a great palette. I also really love the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream palette. This one, I just felt like it was such a complete color story. You have a mid-tone crease shade in here. You also have a blending shade or a transition color. You have a dark shade for the outer corner. And then you have two separate shimmer shades for the lid. So you really can just get complete looks out of this one. You can leave off the shimmer and do an all matte look. I just feel like there's so much you can do with it. And if you're somebody like me who just wears neutrals most of the time, I just feel like this is gonna be such a quick and easy palette to grab when you just want a basic neutral eye. And this is another one that I think is just gonna be fantastic heading into the summer and travel season and all of that. I'm definitely gonna be bringing this with me on trips. Also, I have to mention the Lamora Nude Palette. I couldn't believe it when I tried it. One of you guys had suggested it to me. It's over on Amazon and it basically looks exactly like the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette, except it was only 10 bucks. Then they ended up raising the price to 14, I think because a bunch of you guys were buying it and they thought they 
could get away with charging more, which kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But I have to say the formula was way, way better than I was expecting. I honestly couldn't believe it when I tried it. And I've got so much great feedback from you all too, because those of you who bought it were also really impressed with the formula. So I think it's a great alternative. If you don't want to spend the 70 bucks on the I Need a Nude palette, it's really the next best thing. And the quality is outstanding. I also ended up getting two palettes from Beauty Bay that I wanted to share with you guys. And I haven't talked about these in any videos yet, but I am just continually impressed with Beauty Bay's house brand because these are fairly affordable, like just above drugstore pricing, but the quality is high end for sure. So I got the Smoky palette, which really, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the Natasha Denona Xenon palette a little bit, way less expensive though. And the formula I think is just as good. The shimmers are super silky, very easy to work with the mattes as well. They're ultra blendable. And I think this is a great way to try kind of playing with these shades without having to spend the money on the Xenon palette. I know for me, I don't wear smoky eyes all that often. So it doesn't really make sense to have an expensive smoky palette, but something like this, I think is just perfect. And also the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today is their reckless romance palette. And this too, when I saw this, I knew I had to get it. It has these beautiful pinks and purples and just those rosy tones that I always love. This palette's a little bit bigger than the Smoky palette. It has 20 shades while that one has 16, but I'm obsessed with all the cooler berry tones in here. You also have some gray and silver, some gorgeous purples. You have some neutrals as well. So it's just an all around gorgeous color story if you like rosy tone shadows. So definitely check these out. I think you'll really enjoy the formula a lot. Also, there are two new mascaras that I think are standouts for me. Both of them are tubing formulas. So we have the e.l.f. Lash Extender and also the Tarte Tartlet XL. So the Lash Extender, I think they were trying to kind of copy or dupe the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. While I don't think it's an exact, exact dupe, I do think this comes really close. It's closer than the Milani dupe that they had come out with a while ago. This one isn't as thick and goopy as the Milani and the brush looks identical to the Thrive. And I actually, I think I compared this to the Thrive in a video. So I was pleasantly surprised by this. Again, I don't think it's exactly like the Thrive, but if you don't wanna spend all the money on that one, I think this comes pretty close and it removes in the tubes just like that one does. And also the Tartlet XL. I had the original Tartlet tubing. I liked it, but it didn't remove like a tubing formula. And this one actually does. And I feel like for me, that's the only difference that I noticed between this one and the older one is how it removes. The brush is almost identical. It applies pretty much the same. I get the same kind of lash look. So it really wouldn't surprise me if they end up discontinuing the old purple tube one and just keep this because really, I don't know how much sense it makes to keep both of them. They are so similar. And I know that they had a lot of complaints about the other one not really removing like a tubing formula, even though they were claiming that it was. And then last but not least, I feel like I'm yelling over the landscaper guys out there. So again, apologies if you can hear it. I know it's always annoying when people talk about that, but I really feel like you probably can. It's so loud, it's right under the window. Um, and then when it comes to lip products, there are three things that I wanted to mention. The first one is from Jane Iredale, and this is their Balm Stain, and it's in the shade Forever Peach. So I know they have a pink version of this as well, but they had sent me the peach one in PR and this is the coolest product. I don't really wear lip stains very often because they, they're always drying on me and I feel like my lips always end up looking parched, but this actually stains your lips and it's a really creamy lip balm. So it never feels dry. And I loved the juicy coral shade that this ended up turning my lips. It's one of those pH adjuster formulas. So it's gonna look a little bit different on everybody, but I really liked the color that it turned on me and it lasted all day long. My lips never felt dry for one second. So I'm thinking about actually picking up the pink one and I think they have a couple other colors as well. So again, it's just one of those super quick and easy products heading into the summer. I feel like I could just put this on, go the rest of the day, not worry about what my lips look like. It's great. I also really love the NYX Click Lip Balms. These are called the Fat Oil Slick Clicks. These, I feel like, again, are kind of a nod to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, but I feel like the formula is not the same at all, in a good way. These are not as thick or as goopy as those are, 
They're a lot thinner. Today in the video, I'm wearing the shade DM Me, which is a cooler tone pink. I think they come in gorgeous colors and they are so much more pigmented than the Tarte ones as well. I don't really smell a noticeable scent either. And I know the Tarte ones have like a coconut scent that not everybody loves. But to me, these are more like a tinted lip balm would be. And the Tarte ones remind me of a gloss, but in a stick form. So those are a little thicker, slightly stickier. These are just more thin and moisturizing like a lip balm would be yet again incredible coverage and pigmentation so I think these are awesome I also wanted to mention these elf lip liners as well these are called the cream glide lip liner these are so inexpensive yet a really really good product they're the type of lip liner that you have to sharpen they're like the wooden pencil and usually I find this type to be a little bit drier now I don't necessarily want my lip liners to be overly creamy because then they don't do their job and they don't stay in place. But I also don't like the ones that are dry and they're kind of tugging at your lips. These are the perfect kind of in-between formula. They stay put when you want them to, but they're also creamy enough that, you know, they're easy to draw on. So I really love these and not because they're just good for the price. They're actually just good overall. Like they're a really nice lip liner. So definitely be sure to check these out. They come in a bunch of beautiful colors. I just got some basic neutrals because that's what I wear the most often, but they do have a pretty decent range to pick from. And I also quickly want to mention the K-Skin Isle Lip Balm. This has SPF 30. I've been wanting an SPF lip balm for my lips for a while. And I've seen a few like at the drugstore here and there. They're never really too exciting. And then when I saw this, I just thought, you know, the packaging looks really pretty. It smells incredible. It's like a vanilla cookie, so good. And this color is just absolutely gorgeous. It's the perfect nude and it actually has a lot more pigmentation than I was expecting it to have. It just looks so good on your lips. And it's one of those products I know I'm just gonna keep it in my bag and reapply it when I'm out. Because again, as someone who's had skin cancer twice, I'm really just trying to protect every part of me at this point. So this is another thing that I'll probably gonna go back and grab some more shades in as well. I really, really love it. So anyway, guys, those are all of my absolute favorite makeup products from the past three months or so. I'm definitely gonna do another one of these in June, probably towards the end of June sometime and let you know about all the products I try between now and then. But I just wanna take a minute to thank you all so much for clicking on this video, for watching it. I truly appreciate it. Also, if you enjoyed this video and you like unsponsored makeup content, be sure to subscribe to my channel before you go and if you have a little extra time I'll just put another video up here in case you want to check that out next thank you guys so much and I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one take care bye